Bonjour à tous. Euh, du coup, je vais euh, passer en anglais, effectivement. Uh, so my name is uh, Florian Thibault. I'm a Data Consulting Director at Artifact, and I will let uh, Martin introduce himself as well. Uh, yeah, I'm Martin Sikra. I'm responsible for digital and e-commerce within Unilever France, and before this, I was the Director of uh, e-commerce in Europe for Unilever. So really quickly, I will start with a quick introduction of Artifact. So at Artifact, we uh, help our clients to get uh, value from data in uh, different, uh, with different level of expertise, with end-to-end uh, -end expertise from uh, data consulting, uh, media experts, creative experts, data scientists, and data engineers. And I think today uh, we'll speak particularly about uh, data for uh, marketing and sales. Uh, so with uh, what we call a lean data-driven marketing at scale and how to uh, really build this efficiently into, uh, into the companies. So sorry for uh, a lot of buzzwords, uh, but we'll explain it. Uh, maybe a little bit about Unilever. I don't know if everybody knows Unilever, but we are uh, a, a worldwide company of uh, 51 billion euros turnover. Uh, in France, we uh, serve in four different categories, so uh, beauty, home care, foods, and refreshments. Uh, and because we have such a wide portfolio, actually 99% of French households has a Unilever product, which would mean we would like to know that 99% of households. Uh, finally, for Unilever, it's very important to uh, uh, do business in a sustainable way. Uh, we started this with uh, Paul Pullman when he was our CEO. Uh, what we try to do is uh, grow the business because that is very important because without growing businesses won't exist But doing this uh, by halving our footprint and really trying to do good for the for uh, the planet and for uh, also helping sanitation in people So th that's all of course uh, uh, From a global perspective, but then how do you translate that into a local uh, in a local context? so as uh, As you know, especially in France, there's a huge uh, demand for natural and bio so we're uh, in the process of really transferring our product portfolio to much more bio and natural ingredients. Of course, plastic is a major issue, uh, and we're working towards a 50% uh, recyclable and recycled plastic uh, portfolio within the next couple of years. And finally, and I think uh, our, our new CEO made that very clear, if a brand doesn't have a purpose, it doesn't have a place within Unilever. So it is really important for us that our brands have a purpose uh, and that they actually help in this uh, journey that Unilever is taking. Uh, and that means, uh, sometimes means some hard decisions, uh, but it's something that is really at the core of our business. And then uh, the challenges we had and uh, uh, why we invited Artifact to work with us is that in this new world of uh, uh, marketing and digital marketing, um, marketing is not only a one-way traffic anymore. Uh, marketing becomes much more conversational. And until now, we were using digital mainly as an extension and a, even a replacement of TV. So we were looking in getting to our relevant targets at the most efficient cost. That was the key thing what we were doing. Now we say, actually, uh, when we do digital marketing, each touch point we have with the consumer is not only a way to send a message, but it's also a way to receive information from that consumer. And I think that was really a challenge for us because traditionally we don't have that uh, network and that, that technical network nor the, uh, the processes and capability to actually handle that. And finally, we want to, of course, uh, have three things uh, that, that need to be delivered. Uh, we need to uh, be more efficient in our marketing because of this, because we're becoming more relevant and more relevant means that we can do this at a lower cost. We need to drive sales, both on and offline. So I'm also responsible for e-commerce, but that doesn't mean that everything we do in digital marketing is just to drive sales in online. It's very much also offline. And finally, if we have this data, I think this can be a very, very valuable source also for retailers. And actually, that could drive joint value creation rather than just e-commerce being an additional cost. And uh, this is a, a very conceptual picture, but I just wanted to show you how for Unilever uh, a full funnel marketing works. Because you have to understand that, especially in the CPG world, uh, full funnel actually necessarily doesn't really exist. Uh, because the create demand is done by the suppliers, while the capture demand is actually done by the retailers. And normally there is no connection between these two, so actually there is a lot of loss and a lot of inefficiency in this overall media value chain. And I think that is really what we're looking towards. So we need to rethink how a full funnel consumer journey looks from a, uh, from a CPG perspective. Uh, and just to give a little bit of an idea of what kind of tools we have. So of course we have the whole Google and Facebook network. 
Then we have our, our own brand websites where we give further information if people are considering us. And then we go into retailers to convert. And that's more or less it. And finally, we have a, a program which is called Mavia en Couleur to drive loyalty and retention. Yes, thank, thank you, Martin. I think uh, having this kind of customer journey is not so easy. You have like uh, a lot of different technical and uh, data challenges. Uh, one of the first one is how to uh, integrate all the system together, uh, the systems that are from Unilever, AdTech, MarTech ecosystem, but as well the system from the retailer, and make sure that uh, you can integrate things together and recognize the people on different channels, different devices, uh, different uh, from online to offline as well. So uh, that's a lot of work that we are doing for Unilever as well to make sure that all the systems are integrated and uh, we can drive collaboration as well with the retailer uh, and as well on driving online to offline. Yeah, and what I mentioned before, until now, uh, there wasn't really a full funnel approach because these two things between uh, uh, us as uh, Unilever and the retailers were quite separate. What you see now, there's more and more ways to collaborate together with these retailers. So uh, more digital native retailers such as Amazon actually allow you to push your first party data into their DSP. So that is, of course, a first way to actually start measuring all the way from, from upper to lower funnel. Uh, but in the end, Amazon for us is a very, very tiny customer because uh, a lot of our products are actually much more fitted for a grocery journey, a wider grocery journey, a big basket journey. And in these networks, these kind of collaborations currently do not yet exist. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges we have, both uh, developing together with the retailer, but also creating together with the retailer this value which is there in the lower funnel. Because just imagine uh, that somebody is interacting with an uh, innovation from us in the upper funnel, uh, and we know that person, we recognize this person in the Carrefour environment. Why wouldn't we at that point in time send him a relevant message rather than just a push media message which you currently get? And I think that is the biggest challenge because that exists in a more pure play digital world. It currently doesn't exist yet in the more, uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say old fashioned, but the older uh, uh, retail uh, grocery world. Not working. <laughs> yes. So um, I like this image of uh, the iceberg because how we should get there and what are the challenges we should consider. Uh, so you have an iceberg with on the surface, uh, you see a sophisticated tool ecosystem. So different tools that need to be integrated together, uh, a lot of different campaigns that need to be done, a lot of data, and a lot of techniques, I would say, and how to integrate all of this together. So this is really important, is what uh, you can see on the surface. But I think uh, two other things that are even more important are uh, the first one is to be value focused, uh, to not forget that uh, you're looking for value, you're looking to use uh, the data to drive sales and to drive value for, uh, for your company. And so uh, not, uh, it's uh, easy to forget this and to uh, just focus on uh, some shiny new text uh, with, uh, with different uh, wordings, uh, but it's really uh, what you need always to remember is to focus on the value first. And then the second thing uh, is about the people and the transformation. Uh, it's really like uh, easy to do uh, a pilot, uh, a pilot in a small perimeter, but it's uh, really more difficult to do it at scale. And to do it at scale, uh, you need to uh, do an enterprise transformation uh, to uh, connect, uh, interconnect all the people together, to uh, reskill, upskill eventually the people, and to make them work together in terms of uh, processes. And so uh, why uh, we said lean DDM? Uh, it's a bit of parallel that uh, I did by deep diving in, uh, in the history, in the origin of lean. So uh, in this origin, lean management was invented by uh, Toyota, the family that founded Toyota. A Japanese family. So at the beginning, they were owning a textile uh, company. Uh, so they start uh, using some uh, textile. It was uh, around like 130 years ago. Uh, and uh, they use some looms. So in French, it's métier à tisser. Uh, I didn't know this word either uh, before. Uh, so it's really, they use some looms. And uh, they invented a technique to um, like automatically use this loom to automatically detect if a textile yarn is broken. So this allowed them to uh, really like uh, gain efficiency because obviously someone uh, could uh, monitor different looms at the same time. Uh, then a few years later, they founded a car company which was called Toyota. 
and they applied this, uh, their goal was really to apply this methodology and techniques uh, to make uh, this company the more efficient possible, the more profitable possible, and uh, by, uh, taking, by keeping a good quality of product and a good fiability in the supply chain. And uh, then uh, it's uh, some, I think, American from MIT uh, that have seen that uh, Japanese cars were uh, exported in, uh, in America and a deep dive, deep dive into these techniques and uh, called it uh, lean, uh, lean management. So I like the parallel with lean uh, because right now I think we are uh, at the timing where uh, data-driven marketing is using a lot of techniques, is uh, using a lot of data, uh, but it's not lean yet. Uh, and uh, what we see is that uh, the uh, industrial companies that are using lean management are around like 40% more uh, profitable and efficient than the other companies. And what we believe is as well that in data-driven marketing, uh, using uh, this kind of technique, methodology, processes uh, that allow you to be uh, really efficient, uh, profitable, and to deliver some campaign, some content of uh, uh, good quality and appropriate to the user, uh, gives you uh, better marketing efficiency. Uh, so we build this uh, kind of framework uh, together uh, and that we are applying together with Unilever. Uh, so starting from uh, everything should come from the use case and so from the strategy. Uh, what do uh, we want to achieve? So what is the end goal for Unilever? To have this uh, cross-channel, uh, full funnel and as well online to offline customer journey. Uh, to be able to uh, drive sales, to uh, be uh, more efficient in their communication and uh, then at the end of the day, uh, being more profitable into the marketing by reducing media waste as well. Uh, then, uh, of course, to do this, you have all, uh, a whole set of enablers that are really important. Uh, the first one here is uh, measurement. So you need to define a solid measurement scheme uh, to be able to monitor uh, what you're doing to uh, ensure that uh, you're measuring it well uh, in real time, uh, automat automatically as well and uh, that allow you to uh, take the right decision and to uh, reallocate the budget in the, uh, uh, in the right channel, in the right segment, in the right creative. Uh, then, of course, you have all the tools that you are using that can be MarTech tools, um, ad tech tools, uh, more big data tools as well that needs to be interconnected and integrated together uh, to make sure that it enables uh, to provide this uh, data-driven marketing campaign. Then you have, of course, like all which is uh, more about data and infrastructure. You need to use all the data that you have available into your enterprise, but as well to collaborate uh, with other companies to enrich this data. And in the case of Unilever, it means collaboration with the retailers, uh, with other actors like uh, Amazon, like uh, Facebook, like Google, uh, to make sure that uh, they can be relevant and they can get all the values that they want from it. And then, of course, the creative piece and the content is really important as well to drive some content which is adapted and personalized to the different people. And then, uh, most importantly as well, it's uh, all about role and operating model, making sure that uh, you uh, uh, build the processes, you build the team, and uh, like uh, all the different, I would say, uh, standards and templates to be able to deliver this in a lean way and in a uh, really, uh, I would say, effective way. Uh, and that's where uh, you can do it at scale and get the real value out of it. Um, I think on um, three principles on the lean management are really like, uh, can be applied uh, here as well. Uh, the one is uh, in the value chain that all the stakeholders that work on it and work on the process uh, need to make sure what they provide uh, to the other step of the process is of good quality. And uh, this and to improve and uh, to work on how to improve the quality. If you improve it at each step uh, a little bit, it's becoming really efficient. Uh, then another thing is really to be client focused as well. Uh, so to uh, focus on the end goal and to make sure that uh, what you're providing is uh, you have the output in mind. And uh, so by doing this, by improving, uh, like uh, once you're doing it, all the processes and making sure that you apply this kind of principle in all the marketing value chain, uh, enable you then to uh, drive this at scale and drive this uh, for, uh, in the case of any lever, for uh, multiple brands, uh, eventually multiple countries, and to uh, use, like, uh, I would say, 100% uh, of their media budget in a data driven, uh, compliant way. Uh, of course, uh, this doesn't go from one day to another. Uh, so we still have a lot of challenges in this transformation. Uh, I think uh, one of the key things is actually. 
uh, that how we are traditionally organized is actually not really aligned with uh, what has just been proposed. We are not a process marketing machine yet. Uh, we don't have either the tools nor the capabilities nor the skills directly in place because this is not the way how we did marketing before. So we need to, and that's actually the second, we need to hire a lot of digital talent. And I think uh, for a lot of pe people, the question then becomes, why would you, if you are a digital ta talent, actually work for a company like Unilever? And I think it's uh, uh, quite funny because I started um, uh, a performance marketing team in Europe around about four years ago, and we got somebody that was the head of performance marketing for Adidas before. And he said, going to Unilever is like going to a candy store. Uh, you guys have access to everything from a, from a technical perspective. Uh, we have uh, accounts for almost anything. And of course, there is uh, uh, the willingness and the investment now to also make this happen. And I think for a lot of people that are used to only work in a very small part of this whole digital marketing journey, Unilever is also a company that allows you to actually take a much wider vision of delivering this. And I think that is the reason why we can hire this kind of digital talent. But I also have to honestly admit, it's really difficult to keep them uh, because the market for digital talent is, of course, very overheated at the moment. And then finally, it has to do with redesigning the processes. Um, especially our marketeers are not always that fond of working in processes and working in workflow, um, or workflow tools. And now we're actually asking them to do everything step by step and without too many iterations on the creative. Uh, that's quite tough. Uh, but I think uh, uh, we're now implementing the tools and we're implementing the process to make that happen. We're not there yet, uh, but I think it's a, it's a very important step in, uh, so in the last picture uh, to make that happen. And if, if I wanted to add one more thing on uh, uh, what is um, a digital transformation, because that's what I'm responsible for within Unilever. Uh, digital transformation is really not about technology. Uh, it is all about data, but really it's about structured data. And I think that is something uh, which this is telling us as well. You need to start developing your data strategy with the end in mind. And what I've personally seen too much is that there's a lot of data strategies out there which is not about just about collecting a lot of data and then starting to mine that. Uh, for a company like Unilever, that is not efficient enough. It doesn't give the results quickly enough. So we really need to work uh, end in mind. And I think we have maybe one minute left, so if uh, anyone has uh, any question. <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually all about a qualification of cookies. So we, what we try to do is, of course, if you connect with a different type of content. So the, the funny thing is our websites were always more or less an afterthought, um, and they become much more important in this current context. Because if we can actually follow what somebody's doing and what he's looking into, and then maybe a really easy example is it's very difficult in second party data to find uh, women with curly hair. Uh, but we have a lot of products uh, which are relevant for uh, women with curly hair. So we need, we, we in internationally, we started a platform which is called All Things Hair. So content becomes much more important. And we use the first party data of women that interconnected with that content. I mean, it's a really simple case, eh, but uh, that connected with that content to retarget them. So it's really about qualification uh, of uh, cookie. And also, uh, if we know that people purchase, so sometimes we have links directly into conversion into retailers. Of course, that's very valuable information for us as well. Answer your question. And there's a question. Yep. Thank you. We all know that Unilever is a multi-brand company. So how do you work? Uh, you make the, the brand work together and share data because we have the same issue, I think, in many companies. Yeah, okay, um, so we do it uh, twice, uh, in two different ways. One, we select priority brands, because for us it's impossible to do everything at once. Uh, second, we work with super segments. And super segments are segments which are relevant for all uh, brands, uh, because there are specific passions or specific uh, purpose in those segments which we can use for multi-brands. So it's not, yeah, it, it, I mean, it's it's not, of course, there's also even competition within brands. We have multiple ice cream brands. So we, we always need to watch out a little bit here. But in all honesty, until now, the super segment approach seems to be working for Unilever as such. And, uh, and I think in terms of organization, you also have a kind of digital hub uh, that uh, 
uh, use all the data from the different brands and enable them to uh, do what they want in terms of marketing. Uh, what's like your, your next priorities for 2020? The first things, what to do? Uh, the, the, the key thing is actually if you looked at the house, uh, if you go, can go back one, uh, no. Uh, if you look at the house, it's defining those right use cases. Uh, so defining what are the goals for the brands and the data strategy for those, those brands. That is the, the, the key next step now. So we have that for a couple of brands, but we have, uh, as mentioned, uh, I think in France, 33 brands. So we need to extend that to uh, multiple brands. Have you got already a um, single, unique, uh, centralized platform to collect all your data? Yes. And, and which, which is what? Sorry if I want to shout out here. Uh, it's uh, Adobe. Adobe. Oh, thank you. So the time is up. Sorry, guys. Thank you very, very much, Martin and, and Florian.